Hello and welcome to the latest episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. This is the video series where we teach you how to draw animals in a fun and simple way while we share facts about the species as we go along. So today we're going to be drawing the giant manta ray, a uh, pretty awesome animal, uh, common name again, giant manta ray, and below that you'll see its scientific name in the parentheses, and below that you'll see its conservation status, and right now this animal is at vulnerable risk to extinction. So certainly we've got some conservation work to do. And again, that status comes from the IUCN's red list of threatened species. And that's what it is, at least at the time of the recording of this video. I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and draw our giant manta ray. And I've got pencil and paper as I usually do here today is my sort of drawing method of choice. Just uh, sharpening my pencil here a little bit. There we go, we're ready to get started. Okay, so we're going to start off with some dots. That's usually how we work here. Um, I'll go ahead and put a dot right about there. And a dot maybe right about there. And a dot right about there. That looks pretty good. And I'll just sort of do those as a curve line. Sorry, I should have explained this a little better. Three dots I like to do as a curve line. Two dots we'll do as a traditional straight line that you're used to for your dot to dots. Okay, so there we go. We've got a curve line right out of the gate and we'll continue that towards the back here. We'll use this end dot here. We'll put a dot maybe right about here and a dot maybe right about there. And then again, a nice big sweeping curve here. And you can go either direction You go light at first, darken them as you go. That's how I like the pencil as a nice tool for that. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We're going to come back over to here and we're going to put a dot just right there, right off the last one, and this will be a straight line, pretty straightforward there. Okay, so now we're going to put a dot right about here and a dot maybe right about there. Looks pretty good and we'll just draw a nice straight line there. That looks fine. Now from this uh, dot here, this end dot, we're going to put a dot out here and a dot out here. I've got a nice curving line here now using that middle dot as the arch of our curve. So there we go. And now we're just gonna kind of keep this curving thing going here. Three more dots there. And there we go, we've got this nice curve down there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so uh, one thing that's uh, kind of neat about this uh, ray is that it's the world's largest ray so this guy gets pretty huge um definitely much bigger than you and we'll talk about how huge in a moment but we'll just put a dot here and a dot here and we'll just sort of uh, connect those in a nice straight line uh, but the wingspan of this guy we haven't really drawn much of it yet but he can get to be about 29 feet in wingspan so that's pretty amazing and these guys can weigh a lot like 5,300 pounds so a huge huge animal uh, that you would find out in the ocean. Okay, so I'm going to, from this, put a dot right about here, and I'm just gonna kinda put a, another dot right there and bring that up in a nice sort of straight line there. So I'll explain a little bit what we're drawing here, but we're gonna keep going uh, for a little bit. And we're gonna actually start now to put a dot right here, just all by itself. We're not connecting it to that other dot. Um, and we're gonna put a dot maybe right about here, and a dot maybe right about there. So there's the three dots that I'm working with, and I'm gonna just connect them in a nice curving line there. So there we go. So of course, this is a ray, and rays are closely related to sharks. Uh, they're cartilaginous fish, so they uh, aren't bony fish like you would see in, say, a mackerel or a snapper type of fish. Uh, they have cartilage uh, for their skeletons. Uh, we have some cartilage in our bodies. Uh, so noses be a good example of something that's uh, all made of cartilage, but their entire skeletons are, are made of cartilage there. So here we go. We've got the, this rounded curve that we left off with. We're going to go back up to this top part and use that dot. And then we're going to put one maybe right about here and another one maybe right about there. So now we've got these three dots that we're working with. I'm just going to kind of curve them together nicely there. There we go. That looks fine. And now uh, these two dots that we sort of have left over here, uh, we'll just connect them right there. That's fine. 
And then from this end dot here, we're going to put a dot here and a dot here. And we're just gonna kind of make a nice curved line down just like that. Now from this dot over here, we'll go ahead and put a dot here and here. So I've got three dots now just for a nice curving line there. That's fine. And then from this dot here, we'll put a dot maybe right about there and a dot there. And we'll kind of bring these in a nice curving line there. That looks pretty good. Now from this uh, dot over here, this end portion, we're gonna put a dot here and we're gonna put a dot here and a dot there. So again, we've got three dots making a nice curved line there. There we go. And then from this end dot, we'll put a dot here and we'll use this dot over here and just kind of bring this back. Essentially, that's the underside of this. Uh, we'll talk about that again just in a little bit. We're gonna finish off the bottom side here. So we'll put a dot here, a dot here, and we'll put a dot right about there. We'll make another nice curved line. So what we're starting to bring together here is uh, we've got the mouth uh, starting to happen here and we'll go ahead and put a little tongue inside of here. So to do the tongue, uh, I'm just going to sort of put uh, almost like I'm drawing two sort of hills or the top of a heart, just the top there. There we go. And then I'm just going to kind of round that out on the bottom there. Just tuck it in just like that. And I'm going to kind of darken pretty much the rest of this. Show that big open mouth. Now these guys are filter feeders. So they, uh, if you saw the whale shark uh, uh, drawing tutorial that we did, they have a similar sort of big mouth like they do. Um, and it almost sort of looks the same when you're sort of drawing it here. Uh, and basically they'll use this big mouth to sort of filter in uh, water and then capture prey uh, in, inside as it sort of brings that water in, captures all the zooplankton and other small things that it's going to feed on. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, uh, these uh, sort of things that we drew here, um, you know, they're, they're called cephalic lobes. And they're basically, uh, you'll find these on some mobular rays and especially on this giant manta ray. And it's basically going to use these sort of cephalic lobes to help bring in the water channel to really maximize feeding opportunities. So it sort of uses these as sort of pull in the water uh, most effectively and then uh, start to feed that way. So that's how they sort of feed. They're not filter feeders at the top of the water. They'll sort of swim through the whole water column and then use this sort of cephalic lobes to help pull in water. So let's put on some couple eyes. Their eyes will be sort of at the outsides of these, um, much like the whale shark. Put a one over there and we'll put another one right about here, just off to the outer edges of those cephalic lobes there. And then I'm gonna kind of color those in, but leave a little bit of the white. There we go, just like I usually do, almost like an inner oval in there. There we go, so that looks pretty good. All right, so now on this uh, bottom side of the jaw on the opposite side of the cephalic lobe, we'll go ahead and put a dot there. I guess we already got a dot, so we'll use it. And we'll put a dot here and a dot here and just kind of bring that back around. So that's like continuing what's happening under here and the lobe just kind of comes off like that. Uh, this lobe I'm just going to kind of continue up to the the mouth there so that looks pretty good. Now we're just going to put a little bit of a this is a little bit of more creative liberties here but we're just going to put a little happy smile here just kind of bringing that mouth with a little dimple smile there just give them a little character again we're doing a little fun drawing here uh, overall I try to keep you pretty close to the basic anatomy of the animal, but we're certainly drawing something that's kind of fun as well. All right, so there we go. We've got a nice uh, uh, manta ray sort of face here, or body and mouth. Now we're coming back to this uh, top part where we left off, and we're going to sort of put a dot here and a dot here and kind of bring that, bring that back in another sort of softer curve, just kind of keeping that going like this. Now over on here, we're gonna put a dot here just all by itself, put a dot here and a dot here. We'll just kind of make a nice curving line there. Looks pretty good. And then we'll kind of put a dot here and a dot here and just sort of bring that back. So it's kind of tapering the rest of the body there. That, there we go. So of course, uh, this animal has uh, big distinct wings and that's what we're gonna start a part to, to put on its actual um, pectoral fins have become almost like big giant wings uh, and that's like a typical of a lot of rays they sort of have these pectoral fins that are fused to the body 
and they sort of get extra elongated and become almost like uh, bird wings. And essentially, if you see them swimming in the water, they'll, they, especially the, the manta ray, you'll see these uh, wings moving up and down. So let's draw those now. Go ahead and put a dot here and a dot here and a dot here. So I got three dots there and I'm just kind of making this nice big curving line on my ray there. There we go. Darken that up a little bit. That's oh, looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to come back for this end dot here. Put a dot here and a dot here. And again, nice curving line, bringing that back up just like that. There we go. And now at the end of this tip here, we'll put, we'll use that dot, dot here and a dot here and just make a nice rounded tip to that. that looks pretty good. From this dot here, we'll put a, a dot here and a dot there. Just kind of continue that up a little bit. And now from this dot here, that we have, we're going to put a dot here and then a dot about there. So this is going to kind of be a nice curving line just like that. There we go. So there we go. All right, so we got one of the wings starting to come together there. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, at the back side of here, we'll just uh, put a, a dot here and a dot here and a dot here and make a little rounded shape there. And then we're just gonna kind of continue our wing kind of right onto there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, they actually have uh, uh, a dorsal fin and uh, it's gonna look like almost like a little mini shark fin, very small, but uh, kind of uh, what you'd see on a lot of sharks. So to do that, I'm gonna put a dot here. Uh, we'll put a dot out here and a dot out here just kind of make that nice curving line there and then we'll kind of reverse it go in the other direction put two dots there we'll use this end dot kind of bring it back just like that so there we go we got that sort of nice dorsal fin there and then we have a short sort of tail to do this uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of continue that continue it off and then from here we'll put a dot there a dot there and a dot there we'll make a nice curved line there we go and then we'll do one right below it kind of mirroring that almost pretty close and sort of and we'll use that end point so we'll just sort of basically bring this back to that point so there we go i got that nice sort of end tail there now we're going to put on the other dorsal fin and go ahead and to do that we'll put this other wing on by basically putting a dot right about here off the eye there. And put a dot maybe right about here and a dot maybe right about there. So there we go. This time we'll go in the other direction. Remember, you can go either direction when you put your three dots in place for your curved line. And these guys tend to live near coastal areas. They're, they're pretty widely distributed. They'll find, you'll find them in uh, definitely tropical waters and semi-tropical waters, but they can even be found in temperate areas. They tend to sort of, you know, be near, not far off of the coast. All right, so now that we've got that uh, dot here, we'll put a dot here and a dot here. We'll kind of continue with that uh, curve line now going that direction. And then from here, we'll put a dot here and a dot here. Make another quick short curve there, just like that. Okay, that's looking fine. Now I'm actually going to put the next dot over here and a dot over here and a dot over here and just kind of make a curved line just like that. And you can actually extend that last little lobe and finish it off there, the tip there. It's kind of wrapping around itself. You're starting to see the other side of it, so that's fine. So now we'll use this dot here, put a dot right up here and maybe another dot right about there. And we'll just kind of make this again, nice curving line here for this other wing that's out here. And then from that, end dot that we have there we'll just put a couple closer dots here and we'll bring that back just like that so that's looking pretty good so now we're going to put some a uh, little bit of details we pretty much finished our overall our manta uh, uh, drawing here giant manta but we'll go ahead and uh, finish off with some details here so this guy uh, has some darker markings a lot of times we've seen on ocean animals something that we call counter shading where the top part will be darker and the bottom part will be lighter so we'll capture that here by sort of kind of going around the eyes and going around the mouth here 
up to the other eye. So I'm just making a nice curving line there. And then I'm kind of going to just bring it down to that lobe there, or this, I'm sorry, uh, uh, wing here. And then I'm going to sort of continue this line just a little bit, kind of mirroring this outer shape of this. In fact, I'm going to kind of continue it all the way. Oops, I moved my paper a little bit there. Sorry about that. And there we go. Just sort of a little bit of this would be like the lighter part, and then everything up here would be darker. And we'll go ahead and do that with the same thing that we're seeing happening on this other side here, a little lighter on this side. And then if you want to sort of, you know, hatch that in, I'm just going to kind of darken this this part of the body here. I'm actually going to put a little bit of a line right here, darken it a little bit. That's kind of the medium line. A lot of animals are, everything's sort of, most animals have symmetry. So you know, you sort of see the spine coming off here and then leading down to that dorsal fin. There's a little bit of foreshortening in our drawing there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and just sort of darken in some of these things. Uh, now we get, as we said in the beginning of this, is I'm kind of coloring in my drawing and putting the counter shading in darker on top, lighter on the bottom, leaving the lighter on the bottom white. Um, we'll talk about one more thing uh, here about this animal, uh, and, and it's, it relates to a, a term called fecundity. And uh, all that really means is a fancy term for saying, you know, sort of the frequency essentially of its uh, replication. And that essentially means in its reproduction, how many times does it make uh, more of itself, like have babies and then reproduce. So uh, this would have what's called low fecundity, which means they don't reproduce a lot. Um, uh, we did African uh, uh, painted dogs in the last video, and we said that, uh, you know, if left alone, they would have a nice uh, reproductive rate, and they reproduce frequently enough at a high enough level where if you did takes off the strains, the animal will come back uh, uh, fairly uh, successfully when you reduce some of the pressures that are currently pushing an animal to being endangered. But with this animal, you have to really do a lot more work because of that low fecundity, which means they don't reproduce much. And essentially what that would translate into is about every two to three years, uh, a, a mature giant manta ray will only have one, one uh, baby, one offspring. So, uh, you know, if we're losing these giant manta rays, uh, especially the bigger ones that are at reproduction maturity, uh, we're really losing, uh, you know, the species at a faster rate. So even though the species right now is vulnerable, uh, that, that's an extra bit of vulnerability that has this built into the way it reproduces. So there we go. We've got our giant manta ray sort of illustrated. We'd love to see how yours turned out. Uh, you can share it with us again using that hashtag Minty Sketch. Remember, if you need a parent's help, please uh, get that uh, before you post anything online. And of course, uh, we loved having you here and had a lot of fun together. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. Again, if you're enjoying this video series, you can subscribe to the channel, and that way you'll keep up to date on new drawing exercises. We're always uh, doing new animals. Feel free to leave a comment, too, if you'd like to see us draw an animal in the future. We'd love to get your suggestions, and we'll try to get those in the mix. Otherwise, thanks again for coming, drawing along with us, and we look forward to having you back here in another episode of How to Draw Awesome Animals with your friends at Peppermint Narwhal. Bye-bye.